cancer seems like a really, it's such a big scary thing and it's something that you shouldn't have to face unless you're a big grown up person. 18 year old Josie Bellaby knows her body could be carrying a deadly gene that could increase her chances of breast cancer to 80%. This gene which killed my great grandmother, killed my mother so young, I'm so sad that it's, it could be coming your way. There's now a genetic test that can tell you if you carry this hereditary gene. But at 18, should Josie take it? It's a decision. If you go and get the test done, you can never take it back. So it's just whether or not you want to risk feeling like part of your body might kill you. I think it's rotten that they're having to front this up now, at really quite a young age. Josie's still living at home, for heaven's sake. At 23, Josie's big sister, Lucy, has just decided she is ready. I'm going to know in, what, two months? I'm going to know. But Josie's decision could be changed by her sister's result. Would you want me to just give you the results straight away? Yeah. OK. If I don't handle it very well with Lucy, then how am I going to handle it when it's actually me that's going through it? Josie is an ordinary schoolgirl, facing an extraordinary dilemma. But when will she be ready to face her future? At home in York, <laughs> Josie and her sisters Lucy and Emma have decided to watch a BBC documentary about their mum. She carries the gene, and 14 years ago, took the only step available to try and prevent cancer developing, surgery to remove both her breasts. Now Josie wants to see what having the gene could lead to. For me, it's much too high a risk to, to live with, but the question is sort of quite what surgery? Well, I mean, the, the thing is you've got, I mean, you can't go around with having that risk, you know, 90% chance of getting breast cancer. I mean, you spend a lot of having breasts at all, isn't it, really? I knew long before I had the test that if I had the gene, I would have the surgery. And my instant reaction was just, Get rid of them. They can kill me. Let's get rid of them. Look away, look away. If Josie and her sisters carry the faulty gene, it rockets their lifetime chances of breast cancer to 80%. I'll tell you when it's over. To the bottom side. Oh, are you all right? Are you all right, girls? Yeah. This bit is quite tricky because if I take too much, the nipple is going to die. If I don't take enough, I'm leaving breast tissue here. Any breast tissue, essentially, is potentially bad. Are you upset as well? This was pioneering surgery. Removing healthy breast tissue means cancer does not have a place to develop. It is the only way to reduce the cancer risk. I so wanted my, my boobs done. I, you could tell from the documentary. I was, I just, I thought I was going to get cancer any day. I'm so sad that this, this gene which killed my great-grandmother and came through my grandfather and killed my mother so young, I'm so sad that it's, it could be coming your way. So it's not so much that I'm scared to get the test or I'm scared for the operation. It's a decision. If you go and get the test done, you can never take it back. So it's just whether or not you want to risk feeling like part of your body might kill you. This position is it. Josie is still a schoolgirl and is hoping to go into drama college next year. But she's not shy about discussing her dilemma with classmates. It's your body that you're using, so what if they wanted me to do like a topless shoot and I had like it's a topless film or something and I had like really bad scars yeah. and I couldn't get work or something like that like there's like a, like so many different things and I want advice on like when I should what you guys think I think, think you should just like enjoy your time being like yeah. young you want to like go to yeah. uni and enjoy yourself don't you? Yeah. you don't want to be like worried about it I never thought anything about the future the furthest in front of the future I thought about was like when is my next audition or yeah. like when are my exams coming yeah. up but is there not more benefit in getting it done early so that you'd know? Can you not take mm. action I wouldn't want to know. For me, it'd be in the back of my mind, like, oh, yeah. this is still a risk. And I mean, I, I think overall, I would, I personally would get it. 
but I don't know. Like, obviously, I know cancer would take over your life, mm. but I know if I knew that I had a chance of getting it, I'd be like, Ugh. Yeah, mm. and like, I, I know it sounds funny, but, like, I've just got my boobs. I, like, don't want to have to <laughs> think about, like, getting rid of them yet. <laughs> like, Ugh, couldn't do it. Yeah. I just don't feel like a girl anymore. Yeah, I feel, like, weird. I feel like I'm possibly being forced to grow up a bit faster because of this thing. I think it's shocked our family quite a lot because we always just thought, oh, do you know what, we don't need to think about this, but yeah. actually, yeah. It it, it, soon, yeah. you kind of do, and it's happening sooner than what we kind of, like, allocated for. Mm. And it's a bit scary. Searching for information about when others have had the test. And with help from the Hereditary Breast Cancer Helpline, Josie comes across Bethany Hobson. At 17, she has already taken it. So how old were you when you actually decided to have the dream test? Um, 16. Wow, yeah. that's so young. <laughs> it was. When I was thinking about having it done, mm. and I was like, I didn't know whether I wanted it or not. And half of me was saying that you're dramatising everything yeah. and you won't have it, stop making a huge deal out of it. Then half of me was like, you know you've got it, you have got it, you're going to get cancer. It was very emotional because it was like, I felt like I'd got cancer. How did you feel when you opened it and it was positive? Um, she, she like said it to my face, yeah, so it was like, I kind of just like shut down and I was sat in the office and I was like, I just want to get out. Did you feel that getting the test done at a young age was the right thing for you? Um, yeah. Think about if I'd not been tested, that I don't know how I'd feel. Yeah. Like, if I'd not been tested, would I have just completely ignored it and never got tested? Mm. I've got this dilemma of, of sort of deciding when, when is the right time to get tested. I'd feel like a ticking time bomb. Like, I kind of feel like my body, as, as a young person, is something that I should be, like, enjoying and not something I should maybe be worrying about. Do you, like, how did you, do you feel like that at all? Or? I'm definitely going to have surgery to reduce as my, reduce my chances. So it'll be um, getting my breasts done and then mm. my ovaries to out. She would never go back in time and not have the gene test done when she did, but at the same time she thinks about it so much and she did I think she was quite honest in saying that she did feel a bit like a ticking time bomb and I think that is how I would feel. While Bethany's coming to terms with carrying the gene, back in York, Josie and her friends are enjoying being 18. Tonight I'll be going out and I'll be having a few drinks and there's a definite parallel between me and my friends where it's kind of like they can go out and get hammered and not think about anything. I can do that, but in the back of my head, there's still, should I be drinking responsibly in case I've got this risk? Or should I be trying to think about the future? Or should I, like, is it okay for me to want to be young and want to go out and want to have fun? Or should I be more responsible and kind of thinking about the future more? Nineteen-year-old Ellie Foster understands Josie's dilemma better than most, as her mum also carries the faulty gene. She's decided she's too young to get tested. So do you think you'll get the test done eventually, or...? Yeah, I'll definitely get it done, but not just yet. I just feel just too young to have that pressure on my mind all the time. Yes. <laughs> I like to like, go out with my friends, have fun, mm. not have to think about something negative. I like to think about the positive side of seeing yeah. everyone and living my life, not yeah. just thinking about negative mm. things that yeah. people don't want to think about, really. Mm. I know, like, now a lot of people do talk about cancer a lot more than what they used to. It used to be like, oh, you can't talk about it, it's not Big something... Big C. Yeah, like, yeah. no-one wants to know about it. Mm. But I think you would have to grow up a bit more because you've got a lot more to think about, like, whether you do want to have surgery, whether you want to just forget about it, or... Mm. I think I'd feel I have to be more responsible and just think about all that kind of things. What yeah. would you think? Do you think I same? think um, when I was little, my mum and dad just always were like, um, you don't need to worry about it until you're grown up. And yeah. so <laughs> I like, I'm kind of supposed to be grown up now because I'm 18 <laughs> or whatever, but I don't feel it. And 
I don't know. I feel like it's quite an adult decision yeah. and quite an adult topic and um, kind of talking about it with loads of different people, it makes me feel like if I get the test done now and if I find yeah. out now, then maybe I won't be able to enjoy being young yeah, for as long. Josie's mum, Julia, also feels she should just enjoy being 18. Josie seems to be undecided. She's the, the one that I suppose I'm most concerned about because she's expressed some wish to have it done this early, but she seems to me at 18 very young to have it done and I, I wouldn't stop her. Um, but, I, yeah, I am kind of quite worried about that. Whereas for Lucy, it's going to be very, very different. I think it is going to force her to grow up. But actually, in her case, I think that's going to be quite a good thing. Age 23, Josie's elder sister Lucy is taking the test. their big sister in a way and I kind of obviously done everything first. I guess because I'm five years older than Josie and it does feel like I'm in quite a different place to her now. But I'm definitely not ready 100%. I don't think I ever would be 100% ready. I don't think anyone would be ready. But I think I'm at a place where I can cope with it even if I'm not... I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I think I can cope with it. Today is stage one of the test process and Lucy's attending a genetic counselling session in Leeds, taking Mum along for moral support. Before anyone is allowed to take the test, they have to be assessed to make sure they're ready to handle the impact of the result. I'll start with the name of the gene, which you probably heard from your mother, yeah. which is BRCA1. Basically, the BRCA1 stands for breast cancer gene number one. Yeah. Essentially, all genes are, are our body's instructions for how we're going to grow and develop. And the BRCA1 gene is one such gene that helps protect you from breast and ovarian cancer. If this gene is working fine, then you obviously you have some of that protection. But if the gene isn't working, then some of that protection is lost. Yeah. What we normally say is that there's somewhere between a 60 and 80% lifetime risk of breast cancer for women who carry the gene alteration. The ovarian cancer risk, somewhere between 20 and 40%. Oh, so that's lower than I thought it would be, yeah. Well, the population figure, to give you some background, is about 1.5%. Yeah. So it is obviously quite, quite significantly increased. Risk, increased. Yeah. The only option for reducing your ovarian cancer risk is to have your ovaries removed, yeah. which usually is done as women get towards the age of 40. And having your ovaries removed, that means you can't have any more children, and it does put you into the menopause. The timing, I think, is very important because you've got to feel comfortable with these results. Yeah. What I suppose we're trying to talk through is whether you feel that the uncertainty at the moment is going to be better or worse than actually knowing. I think it's really good. It's really good. Oh, you right. Yeah, it's really oh. interesting. It just makes me sad because it's all coming kind of real now. You know, this thing that I so dreaded when I went through it myself that, that you'd all face it. And here it is, it's actually happening. And I thought you'd hard. feel it would be worse than me. <laughs> I, I actually feel really quite emotional today. I feel sad that it's, that it's actually, it's happening. And, you know, you're having to think about things like mastectomies and ovaries removed and all that kind of stuff. I just feel horrid that you've got to think about it at all, really. But, well, I'd already planned this and I already knew that I wanted to get the test and I'd already thought, I've been thinking about it for years, so it's not... Do you think it'd be a relief, actually, almost to yeah. know? 